A look around Flanders and its most traditional points. One of the oldest outdoor tracks there. And it's one of the oldest, most traditional Wednesdays of the season where we go next. The build-up to the Ronde continues and we will once again check the pulse on everybody. It's Duarte Vlandre today, just a few days after we were in Wevelkem. Here in Wairachem at the finish line, we await the riders that started in Russelare. It's just 11 degrees. It's a cold, windy day in Flanders. It's typical bike racing weather. And that old traditional track is the De Freya Sercu track, just down the road. That's the Kunster in St. Amanskerk. And Brusselare, the home to Kurs, Museum van de Wielersport, cycling museum, where you can see all the best relics and artefacts from the years of racing in this great land. Today it hosted the start, as has done in the last few years in Dwarsdorf Landre. And today is the 78th edition of a race that used to be called Across Belgium, Dwarsdorf België. It's the French that are here as well today from Total Energy, the likes of Anthony Tourgis, possible winner of this race, trying to do his best this year. Alexander Christoph, fit and well after having to miss Gent Wevelkem, a former race that he's won. Fever on Sunday morning. He's back well today. Lotto Destiny are without Arnaud Dully, the big Belgian hope from Wallonia. Today they go with the likes of Jeno Bergmus, as it's the Australian Michael Matthews who leads the charge for Jaco Alula. He was presented speaking to Carl van Nieuwkerke this morning. There's Jody Meus, podium at the weekend in Wevelgem. The man who won on the Champs-Élysées last year. Belgian hope. See what he can do today. Not too many hopes for Arkes B&B hotels, I'm afraid. Their main sprinter, Arno Demar, missing. And there's Delphine Persson in a working guise today. A famous Flemish boxer. And watching on as her day job as a police officer as Oyer Lascano, the Spanish champion, waved to the crowd. There's young Josh Tarling from Wales, one of the youngest riders in the race, just 20 years of age, European time trial champion. And there's a former winner of the Tour of Flanders himself, Alberto Betiol from Tuscany. Here's a superstar, Biniam Girmay, the Eritrean sensation who won in Wevelkem a couple of years ago. He's having a very good spring. He's spending his spring living in Flanders. And here's a local boy. West Flemish hero, Yves Lompart, alongside the most famous but less popular today, Julien Alaphilippe. Stefan King there, alongside Lawrence Pithy, the Kiwi sprinter. He was having a great day in the breakaway with Mathieu Follapool until the legs went on Sunday. Let's see what he can do for Groupama FTG, the French team today. Tim Wellens racing for UAE Emirates. His team are actually staying about 300 metres from the finish line during this Classics campaign. Not far to go for him. And today, dressed up in the double denim of Alpecin de Koenig, Jasper Phillips are the winner of Milano San Remo. No match of Fondapool today, so he's leading the line. And there's Jasper Sturver. Comes from a family of chocolate makers over in Lerva. Former winner of Milano San Remo. Looking to do his best here. Up against the returning Wart van Aert, who races for just the fourth time this season. Mars Pearson on the podium, previously in the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Now one of the favourites after having won at the weekend, beating Mathieu van der Poel. Tim de Klerk on the podium as well, a West Vlaming local rider. And this is Wart van Aert. Back on his bike for Visma Lisa bike. No Christophe Laporte today, however. We do remember world champions present and past. Present world champion, well, we won't have to too much wait to see him again. He'll be back at the weekend. The mayor got us started. And Brusselara waved goodbye to the peloton as they headed off into the Flemish Arden in their race across Flanders, Dwars door Flanders. Race director Scott Sullivan waving the flag and they were off for a big battle that would last around an hour before any of the breakaway was allowed to go. 
In the last 10 years, we've had some big names winning this. Laporte last season, Van der Poel the year before, Van Baal, Van der Poel again, and a two-time winner two years running, the local boy. That was a dream, wasn't it, for Yves Lompard? It's been six years since a Belgian win. No pressure then, Wild Van Aert. This is the parkour today, 188.6 kilometers in total, starting in Brusselada and on the flat roads before they go in towards Aldenarde. After that, Warakim. First couple of cobbled sectors at the Heerlestraat and the Varent. The Holloway comes after that and then one of the identity climbs of the race. The Knochtebert, the Côte de Trieux. Then we've got the Maria Borostrat, Bertenaute, Canariberg, Knochtenberg again. And then we go back to the Maria Borostrat for the second time. And it's two passages of a different hill to finish off. The Nokerberg to be climbed twice before the end. 20 obstacles in total. It's a big old, fast old race. Hello and a very warm welcome to live coverage of the 78th edition of Duarte of Landre. This is the breakaway that's taken quite a bit of time to get going. Over an hour of racing on a windy day. A lot of it into a headwind. And it has eventually gone. Two and a half minutes for a group of 11 riders. And there are 11 really strong riders here. You can see that Movistar are involved. They're represented today by their Danish rider, Matthias Norskort. 55 here at the back for the local team. Sudal Quickstep is Kasper Pedersen. 123 representing Dick Atlon here. This is the man who was the Belgian champion, Dries de Bont. 155, well, that's on the back today of Nicolas Merkel from Germany. That's Thomas Gachignard from Total Energy. 163, this is Amon Grundal Janssen from Norway. That's a real United Nations today, but we've got more Belgian representation. Ante Marche Wonti, represented by Dries de Poter. Getting bad news that Jan Tratnik has joined Milan Fretin in abandoning the race. Tratnik who crashed at the weekend. This is Donovan Grondin on the right hand side. And also in the breakaway, the former Dutch champion Pascal Einkorn. Completing the list, Victor Verkouilly. And they're representing Uno X Mobility, a team from Norway and Denmark. It's the Norwegian rider Jonas Abramsen. So two and a half minutes, 104 kilometers to go. And that means we are not too far away from our next Helling or Hill. We're not too far from the highest point in East Flanders, the Hauton. Interesting to see how this develops. It's been a fast race in the last few years. Headwind start today. We'll see if that messes around with the average speed in total. But the fans have come from all over the road. Despite this being a working Wednesday afternoon, there's the Danish fans there. And 1.8 kilometers on the road between the breakaway and those chasing on. This is the view from up on high. Not too far from Bronsehip. Look up the Hauton for the first time, then go to the Knochtenberg. Chasing Peloton looks like this. And our first look at exactly who's controlling things. It looks as though Bora Hanskor are pretty content to try and help and chase. Riders are there from Visma Lisa Bike. And no surprise to see Tractor Tim. Tim de Klerk, local rider, doing the best to pull back. He's had a busy week. He's already been on one of the top Flemish and Dutch language podcasts. False Blatt. And he's back on his bike racing, doing his J-Dog today. This Melissa bike there as well. Well, with Jan Tratnik abandoning the race, you have to say that's not great news ahead of the weekend. Here is Tim de Klerk. Lidl Trek have been the team that have been the most aggressive, haven't they? Certainly in these races so far. We saw it at the weekend with attack after attack after attack. And it's interesting that they're deciding that racing is really what they need. Nobody rested here, really. Milan's here, Pedersen, Stava, Kirsch as well. They're going everything, all in. 
to try and take as many big results as they can. And here's the main man himself of Isma Lisa bike, Walt Fanard. How's that elbow? Well, it looks okay. Crashed in Arlbecker, didn't he? He's come down from altitude, spent 22 nights on top of Mount Teide in Tenerife. Big altitude camp for him instead of the earlier season racing. Man, he's going to get with just four race days to the Tour of Flanders at the weekend. It's a completely different approach, but scientifically backed one nowadays. Just getting news on race radio that we've had an abandonment, I'm afraid. And Patrick Eddy of Australia. Rise for Dare Seven. They're not having a good time of it, are they? They could do with a result. John Degenkolb's here for them. There's confirmation on your screen of what we've just been hearing. Good continue of Aussies racing today. I know that plenty of you be joining us very early, or well, late into the night. Could be early morning. It's about that crossover time, isn't it, for you guys? A very good evening for, to all of you watching in Australia. Here we go then, up the hill and climbing the Hortan. It's a strange hill, this one in Flanders. One of the most important in bike racing. No cobbles on it, it just drags up. Hotel that turns into the new Aquaramont. New Aquaramont side. There's Thomas Gachinia looking at the cameras. And those on the side of the hill, knowing they'll get to see a lot of the race today. There'll be a good crowd up there today. Clapping along the riders. Two and a half minutes coming to the top of the Hotel. And amongst the crowd, you can see all the soigneurs. No big feed zones really anymore. This is one of the official feed zones, but you can often see that. Revitaillement. The Bevorading. Refueling is now done just about anywhere in racing, isn't it? There's the famous old windmill at the top of the Hotel. Now a viewing point, really. And we'll be seeing the Hotel again later on in the race. That'll be hill number nine of the day. Twelve hills, eight separate cobbled sectors today. And of course, if you're talking about the Maria Borstraat, there's a, a hill or two hidden away in that, isn't there, in the Steinberg trees? Thankfully, the rain has stayed away today in Flanders, however. Not necessarily forecast to be the case at the weekend touch and go whether it will rain certainly looks set to be a windy day on Sunday for Flanders Moister the most important day in Flanders the tour of Flanders itself so off the top of the hotel and back onto probably the most famous dual carriageway in cycling you see a tax come and go on here in tour of Flanders each and every year these in between bits between the hills and the cobbled sectors. That is where having a look at Donovan Grondin there. The rider of French nationality who comes from a French overseas territory from the Indian Ocean. He's been a world champion on the track. Here he is riding on the road for his Arkea BMB team. And talking of champions on the track and road, right in the centre of your picture wearing the Ineos Grenadiers jersey, that's Elia Viviani. Isola della Scala up in the Veneto. Man on your picture now. Julian Vermota. Nice to see him back. Had to ride as an amateur last year, but he kept on believing and he's back at the top level. We saw Tim de Klerk before, didn't we? Well, he's the man who was Tim de Klerk before Tim de Klerk. Riding forever and a day on the front of the peloton. So now, quick step coming up to the front. Just keep your eye on the man third wheel there. 
Paul Magnier, just one of two teenagers in this race today, 19 years of age, the Frenchman. Won on his professional debut when he was riding in Mallorca earlier on this year. Trofeo Felanich went to him. You can see the satellite trucks down there, just proving it's the highest point in the region. That's where a lot of the signals are relayed. And the race will pass again later on, and on Sunday when we get to the main day, when we get to the Tour of Flanders. This will be very, very busy at the top here as well. Beautiful part of the world, the Flemish are, then, if you want to ride your bike. In the middle of the farmlands, and you can see today, though, if you're not in the right place in the bunch, just listen to that. That's the noise of the wind howling. And a lot of it is going to be blowing across the road. Peloton fighting for the sharp left turn here. And those who miss it, having to go the long way around, just look at that. Easy way to lose 30, 40 places in the peloton if you aren't quite paying attention. And things string out again. Two minutes, 23 now. Not really one team pulling things along, is it? It's just fast racing all along. Carries on like this, the breakaway quite naturally will lose time. Second so long for the break to go, though. You could just see one of the team cars moving up finally and able to service its own rider. Finally, uh, Flanders Baloise team. Victor Vercruy. So much road space available here. Even so, some riders still on the bike paths. <laughs> Have to be hoping the VAR isn't paying too much attention. Riders rip roaring down. Not too far from our next hill now. Will be the Knochterberg. Incredible sight rail all across the road here. 96 k still to go, and they are battling for each and every twist and turn. This is Flemish racing in a nutshell. Back down to Rosigny, down to the bottom of the new Aquaramont. Missing out, of course, Ronce here. And we're very briefly into the French-speaking part of Belgium, very briefly into Eno. And the battle that you've been seeing is because this is coming up. This is the start of the Knochterberg. Côte de Trieu. And even here in the breakaway, they know that things are coming down. Two minutes, 18 of an advantage. And we last saw this particular hill on Friday. And everybody battling on that wide road because they know it's narrowed. They know that right turn is coming. Bingham Germay nicely placed to the front. Right from Eritrea looking to add another Flemish cobble classic to his name. First African ever to win a Cobble Classic in Belgium. So much competition here, though, just for these positions. Lascano, Spanish champion, left and side moving up as well. He was in the breakaway last year before finishing on the podium. It was a history making performance as well. Lascano, the man who comes from the Basque capital, Vitoria Gasteis. First ever Spaniard on the podium. Little Trek or back to the front, and after all of that battle, it's tractor Tim time again. Edward Turns comes to help him, rider from Kent. He has a great record in this race, by the way, twice on the podium. Nowadays, much more in domestic mode, though. And this is such an important turn that even the likes of Wart van Aert moving up to the front now. Søren Krau is there as well for Alpacinda Koenig. Third wheel on the wheel now of Mars Pedersen, who's just pumped him out the way, the man who won at the weekend. All of this battling, amazingly, has taken 20 seconds off the gap in just the click of a finger. Peloton is about to approach 
the Knochtoberg. And safe in the knowledge they've won that battle. Little truck slowing up, taking it properly. Give my trying to come up on the inside after being bopped down a little bit. And all the riders here who didn't make it in as they funnel into that narrow stretch of road. A couple onto the gas. Thankfully, nobody in the ditch this time. Has been known to happen. And the gap's down to two minutes already. Oh, on long line. It's a glorious sight in the Flemish Spring. And what we often see on the Knochterberg, teams across the front slowing things down. And you may see a little bit of an acceleration towards the top. We've seen this before. But the battle has been won. A lot of the time, not necessarily about catching the breakaway yet. They're on their way up the Knochterberg here. It's about making sure at the front in case of any incidents, crashes, things like that. Seven point four percent average gradient at the Knochterberg. Twelve point two percent maximum comes up to the very top. And next time we're here later in the race, by the way, we'll then go straight to the Hotel. We'll be into the final 50 kilometers. A series of loops that have been thrown together on the page. You're rarely riding straight in this part of the world. Nice crowd up here today. A few out on their bike. Brave souls given the weather. And the French supporters are here too, waving their flags. And a man to cheer from, two men to cheer for. Grondin and Gachignan. There's the steepest section of the Knochterberg out the way, and then the right turn comes to the top now. Knochterberg, Côte de Trieux. The fourth climb of 12 today. Climbing this side of the Mont de l'Encluse. Up to the corner where we've seen bizarrely uphill crashes in the past. Daniel Lloyd crashing there a few years ago. Not that we remind him about it. You see from that British flag there that the wind is helping them up. Peloton have, as much as they can, put the brakes on. The wind is at around 25, 30 k's an hour today, with gusts up to 50. Van Dijk brothers moving to the front as well. There's Matteo Jorgensen on the right hand side as we look at it in the yellow jersey too. Recently won Paris Nice. We're hearing of another abandonment as well. Elmar Rehn is the Dutch lead out man for Team Jeka Alula having to abandon the races. As they're coming together at the back. And that's not good news for Papen Renderink, young Dutchman. Has been impressing actually his bosses at Sudal Quick Step, but not that there's been much competition to impress there. They are racing at home. In recent years, they would have been almost obliged to put on a show here. There's another local boy, Tish Benotz, on your screen. It looks as though he's been involved in something as well. You can see that the right arm is bandaged up, and on the left hand side there. Just had it that pointed out to me by my producer, Derek. There's a, a chain ring mark on his left elbow, Tish Benot. We did hear of a couple of crashes earlier on. And again, that's that coming together there could also be the culprit. It's not a simple day, is it? I was just about to say as well for Sudal Quickstep that 
They've fallen on hard times when it comes to winning cobbled classics. And sports director Tom Stills, a former winner of this race. Yves Lompart in their team today, a two-time winner back-to-back, -back, and the last Belgian winner in 2018. Oh, the last five kilometres are a great example of how cobbled classic racing goes sometimes. Peloton fighting for that position to go into the narrow road and the turn, and 25 seconds disappearing from the gap. And they took it just about as easy as you could up that climb, and the gap's gone out to 2.30 again. Now we're over the top, Little Trek putting the pressure on again. Always wanted to keep their riders at the front. This is Edward Turns. Oh dear. This is what happened a minute ago. And there was Tish Benod. This is Pepin Brenderink. And there you can see him just left hand side. There's a little bit of a mark there. Lotto Destiny and Groupama now moving to the front. And look at this fight, that washing machine effect is in full flight now. And it looks as though it's on the maximum spin cycle. Those who are at the front are now quickly bumped out towards the back. Onto the concrete Belgian beton wig. One long line. Mechanical issue for one rider down here. There looks to be one of the riders from the Bahrain team. I tell you, it's Fran Miholjevic from Croatia. Uh, it's a back wheel. Uh, it's a back wheel. And a crash happened further up as well. We're hearing that there's an Astana riser that's gone off to the right-hand side and doctors being called for on the race radio. It sounds like Gleb Brusensky is the rider who's gone down. In the meantime, Pithy, Kung are very active here. And this is Kupama really making their move. Back towards Klersbergen and Quaramont here. And the next climb, once you've gone through Zulzeke, will be Kortekeer. Now then, rider with an issue here. And he's a rider from Groupama FDG. It's Lawrence Pithy. Oh, no. They're driving it at the front, and one of their main men is at the back here. Jake Stewart is at the front for them with Stefan King. British rider, second wheel. Look at the wind blowing across the road. Everybody over that left-hand side splits at the back as well. If you're caught out in one of those crashes, this could be race over. That's no exaggeration. A few riders with real difficulty here. 23 is Robert Kees. 25 is Senna Leersen. Both riders from Flanders. Kees, a good track racer. Leersen, son of Bart, who was the sports director as well, but... He's no longer got his father looking at him from the car. He's moved on to Tudor Pro Cycling as Butlers in this winter. Not good news for Jasper Philipsen. Less lieutenants there to help him. 87 kilometers to go on this Wednesday afternoon in Dwarsel Vlaanderen. Sit here at the finish line talking to him until the atmosphere is slowly building. The wind is howling as well. We're hearing that Glebrzeski has abandoned the race now after his crash. So Kupama just knocked it off a little bit after having seen that Pithy was the rider on the side of the road. 
And in the meantime, they're going to be fighting for this. Just take a look at how narrow this goes now before we go up the Corte Quer. This is the start of it. Right turn towards the road that goes up then. It lasts a kilometre. It gets nice and steep towards the top. Nice and steep for us looking on. Not so nice and steep for the riders who are there. Confirmation of Gleb Rusetsky and his abandonment, the rider from Kazakhstan. Again, just look how narrow this is. Once the peloton get on here, they will be fighting for everything. And that fight continues now. Two minutes, 12 seconds behind. This race crossing 12 small hills before the finish and eight sector sectors of cobbles. A little trek just across the road here. They want to keep this position. They're so good at this in the last few races. Sturven is in fine form. Second in Arlbecker on Friday. A race they call the Kleiner Ronde, Mini Flanders. This is the pace being set by the breakaway on the Kortekir, hill number five of 12 to be taken on in this Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen. In the breakaway, Pedersen, De Porter, Norsko, Grondin, De Bont, Merkel and Janssen. And they're accompanied by Einkorn, Abramsen, Gashinja and De Verkouilly. 11 riders in total. And some strong riders from the World Tour as well. 25 teams, by the way, taking part today. And we had 174 riders to start. 188.6 kilometres to take on. And we're now in the heart of the Flemish Arden. In the middle of the Flemish Holy Week now. This is the top of the Kortekir. Not one of the, the big cobbled climbs in the region, but it's really tough nonetheless. And over the top, well, there is Norskar just trying to get his... Legs twisting and turning again. Peloton now coming across that little bridge over the moat and onto the start of the climb. And if you're right at the back here, good luck. Right, he's getting back on. There we saw Leerson, who was dropped. And Tom de Vriend out the back as well. Belgian rider for Q36.5. Swiss team. Riders staying at the front, ready to go, including Victor Kapanartz. A Belgian rider, but he's no longer a resident of Belgium. He moved to Spain over the winter, to Andalusia. He's not one of these riders who's gone to Andorra or Monaco. And even on the Costa Blanca, he's chosen... This is the most Victor Kapanartz thing in the world, by the way. The most individual of riders. Chosen a very small village in deepest, darkest Andalusia. Not too many people live around there. And he's got great training roads and hills, and his logic is that he think he'll gain at least 10 days a year where he's not sick, not able to train with the weather and the nice training roads. And Victor Campanard's always looking for ways to improve his performance. Danny for Poppel, looking good for Bora Hanscrup. Dutch rider. Can do a bit of everything, Carney. He can certainly sprint. On paper, should be a, an ideal sort of classics rider. This Melissa Bike making sure they're represented by one of the Fondaker twins. Issues in the breakaway. Oh, dear. And it's a flat back tyre for the rider from BSM, Firminik Poster, now Nicholas Merkel. On to the next cobbled sector, the Maria Borrestraat. And what a horrible place for this to happen. 
cobblestone sector that is 2.4 kilometers long, includes the climb of the Steenberg trees and the Stationsberg descent. Oh dear. And that could well be Nicholas Merkel's day in the breakaway done, we will see. Not having a good day of it so far, Dersem. Meantime, the peloton over the top of the Kurtike. From here, they head into Markadal. A big sector of the race coming up. Maria Borrestrat in any race, in whichever direction, whether you're climbing up the Stationsberg or going this way and descending, it's always difficult. Steinbeck trees climb in it as well. And they're not Paris-Roubaix cobbles. But they're nasty cobbles nonetheless. Bone-shaking stuff. And now the break's down to ten. There's Kasper Pearson, who's in there for Sudal quick step. Now then, Dries de Bont. How much time? Two minutes? A little bit more than that, Dries. 2.46 right now. From Belgian champion. Now riding for a French team this year. As Lidl Trek. Hearing that Tom de Vrindt has abandoned the race, we saw him being distanced not so long ago. There's a lot of riders calling it a day, of course, thinking of the weekend as well, plenty. Well, Lidl Trek, they're not just picking up bargains in the middle aisle today. They've got all their riders right at the front shopping for everything. It's Damis Edward turns onto the Maria Borostrad. Second wheel is Jasper Stur. Jonathan Milan, keep your eyes on him. Big sprinter, such a powerful unit from Northern Italy. Oh, riders off the right hand side, one in the ditch there. Difficult to keep it up on the cobbles, and if that happens, it's the rider from Israel, Premier Tech, who's in trouble. So many obstacles. And they're not always necessarily hiding around the corner. This time straight in front of him. Another reason why you must be at the front if you can. It's an age-old thing in bike racing, not everybody can be at the front. That's why Lidl Trek are doing such a good job here. That's Alex Kirsch, national champion of Luxembourg. cobbled sector, to my mind, in this part of the world that's comparable to this, is what we normally see in the Omlop at Nusplad, the Haaguk, connected to descents and climbs, it's not just a flat cobbled sector, of course that particular one lives, leads into the Lebe, on the Maria Borostrat we've got Steinbeck threes and then the downhill cobbles, thankfully today it isn't raining, but the downhill cobbles through the Stationsberg aren't fun either. Not much time to take a drink. The wheels are held up for any punctures. A couple of splits developing in the peloton as well. Across the tracks here.
2.20. 80k to go. And we know that racing starts earlier and earlier and earlier nowadays, doesn't it? But my oh my. This has been full on since the start. And the first hour and a bit that we didn't see. No breakaway for the first hour. A lot of headwind riding as well. Three years now since we had the fastest ever edition of this race. That was won by Dylan van Barlop. There's been a real difference in speed in the last few years at this particular race. That fastest race, ridden at 46.2 kilometres per hour. I would be hoping to be up there amongst the best on the fastest days here. It's 46 on his back. And seems an age ago we were talking about Lawrence Pithy and his mechanical. This is how long it takes to get back on. And all of the extra energy that he has to expend. Manu was very close to fighting Mathieu von der Poel and Mars Pearson for the win at the weekend, now finds himself right up the back. It's a tough, tough school, Flemish racing. We'll go back to that win for Van Bala, the Dutchman, in 2021. In fact, the last three editions all sit among the top four fastest ever editions. Parkour's changed slightly, hasn't it? quite as strenuous anymore as it used to be, but this is still a hard race. It's condensed, if anything. There might be slightly less hills, and a couple of the more famous ones have been left out, haven't they, nowadays? No Quaravant or Paterberg, no Dijenberg nowadays. They're saved for the big event on Sunday. But this is a mightily difficult race, and it's being ridden at lightning pace from the front again. Turns, who's now 32. So he lives just up the road in Kent. A big couple of years for him. He became a father last year. And continuing to race at the top level. Peloton is so strong out. Almost half a kilometre, or even half a kilometre from the front to the back. So hard, if not impossible, to move up. You need your teammates. And Ineos Grenadiers, for the first time for a while, moving up left-hand side as we look at it now. And that's Josh Tarling, the young man from Wales. He's looking after Magnus Sheffield. He's looking after Ben Turner. Sheffield, the American. Turner, the man from Yorkshire. And Tarling, European time trial champion, one of the most gifted riders against the clock in the world. Already competing with the likes of Remco Evenepoel and Filippo Gann against the clock. And a split developing behind here. Now keep an eye on it, who's in this group? 73 there is Jonas Rutsch. Yuhi Todome, Japanese rider making his debut in this race, is caught out as well. Ludovic Rubet. They'll be going back to the Nokereberg where he won the Nokere course in a breakaway a few years ago. He's caught out as well, the Fleming. And two splits now developing behind. Wilder's well, really fighting for each and every twist and turn. It's already looking, isn't it, with 77 kilometers to go, that we're going to have quite the rate of attrition. And poor Lawrence Pithy, he's learning the hard way today. Not much you can do, if anything, about a puncture. He's being given a bitter, bitter lesson. And this is just the fight to get back onto the one of the groups at the back. It's one, two, three groups for Peloton. And the wind is blowing across the road. Massive committal to get back on behind. Two riders from Sudan, quick step caught out there. And the 
the wind is blowing from the left to the right as we look at it. Right as a cross, you can just see on the right-hand side taking more shelter. J.K. Lula start to move up. Kel O'Brien, seventh last year. Well, seventh two years ago, I should say, on debut. He's up in the centre. He's being protected by Luke Durbridge. Has a lot of experience in these races. Edvo Borsen Hagen's caught out there. Albert Torres, the man from Menorca. Only ever rider from his island in the Mediterranean to have ridden the Giro d'Italia. It's a very different bit of riding in the classics, but it's a bit of riding that suits him more as a man from the track. This is bad news for Kofidis, and they've had a lot of bad news this year. Alexis Renard. Oh, dear. It's the 27th of March, and they've still not won a race. Bernal, latest rider to suffer, to suffer, I should say, from a mechanical problem. Highly impressive, though. They're here on Massacane. Lidl Trek. Tom Screenge as well, who was so good earlier in the year in the Omlop at Neustadt. Nicholas Merkel, who was in the breakaway, has been caught by the peloton after his puncture. And peloton that's fighting for every little bit of available real estate. Through this corner, scream of those on the side of the road as they get through. And if you're caught out, here's another rider loses contact at the back. It is so difficult to get in. The brake's doing pretty well. Rider losing contact this time was Edward Turns, but you get the feeling that he's done his work here. Oh, he knows it as well. If he has to go and take an early bath, he'll be hoping that he's able to watch his teammates win the race from the warmth of the team bus. One rider may be away, attracting the attention of the cameras on the bike path there. Van Dijk on the right-hand side. Just see it's the pavements that you're not allowed to ride on, and again, riders moving up left and right. It's such a difficult rule to enforce, isn't it, in Flemish racing, because everybody's looking for that advantage. But you can see why it's banned. A nasty little sign on the right there that could, of course, a very nasty accident. They are shooting around these corners at 50, 60 k's an hour. Here is Kapanart who find himself on the front. Lot of destiny having to go back to the board, drawing board, really. No Arnold de Lee, but there's a, a world tour debut for a really talented young rider from Belgium in uh, Alex Seegaard. Up there in the Belgian National Championships with Remco Evenepoel last year. And now up here, as we're into the final 75 kilometres, and we're approaching our next climb, Bergtenauten. many farmers' protests. Of course, we've been very lucky here in Flanders. The importance of the racing to the cultural fabric of this region. And they often make their voices heard, but very rarely, thankfully, interrupt things. As we see it coming together there, almost looked like there was a crash. Thankfully, a couple of riders keeping it up. Wild van Aert staying right at the front here. Knows how precarious this piece of road is. Fabian Linard moves up on the left. And we're back to the head of the race now. Another of those twists and turns that's going to be fought for. These country farm lanes here, they almost look like footpaths. Bergtenard is the next climb coming up. It's very steep up here. Oh, 
Well, this is one of the beautiful climbs in Flanders. It was actually redone and resurfaced and relayed. It's perfect for racing. Snakes up this hill. Retired rider Alan Piper, Australian who long time lived in Belgium. This is his favourite climb in Flanders. He's got his own bench where he sits up here. Alan who's had to have time away through his battle with cancer in the last few years from the sport, but still rides his bike around this region. Still around the races. Donovan Grondin not staying around the breakaway. This could be the moment where he just loses contact. He's having to fight hard, the Frenchman, now. What a beautiful shot that is. And look at the acceleration here from Fisma Lisa because they're coming up to the turn. Wout van Aert being put into the right position. If he's there, the rest know they have to follow. Magnus Sheffield is doing just that. Left turn here. It's Van Dijker who's doing the work. A little trek from that great position where they were. They've just lost it. They're in around 15th to 20th to even 25th position there with most of their team. We've seen that Edward Turn's job for the day was done. Who is next to sacrifice themselves? The importance of cycling being a team sport, real, really evidenced in these races. So better turn out as it's steeper section early on at 13%. 6.2% average gradient, lasts just over a kilometre. And now it's Van Dijk who takes it on. Second wheel is Fonard. Just keep your eye on Visma Lisa bike. Are they preparing something special? Haven't quite had it all their own way this week as they have in previous weeks. And they had, of course, this time last year when Christophe Laporte took the victory. This is Ineos Grenadiers launching things. And Magnus Sheffield is right at the front. In the meantime, right at the back and in trouble. Oh, Kellen O'Brien. And Sheffield's going for it here. Now, is anybody going to go with him? The answer is yes, and that yes is Stefan Kuhn. Matteo Jorgensen will cover this as well. So it's Sheffield, the young American. Jorgensen is compatriot in the yellow third wheel. Little Trek, after having been there, have had to get to the front and send one to follow. And Stefan Kuhn was there. And the man to follow is the man who won at the weekend, Mars Pearson, former world champion. Turgis, French rider from Total Energy, follows. Then you've got Gianni Van Mersch, he's the former gravel world champion, racing under the Flemish banner. Oh, well. Sheffield's move there has made things interesting, but it has not split the group. The chequered flag has been waved, the engines have been revving. Sheffield first to put his foot down on the pedal. And all these splits behind developing because of that move. Gap down to 126 now. The breakaway there was 10 men. But as you could see, it was starting to get weaker. Now it's Victor Campanat's time. You can always rely on him to light it up early. He has history in this race as well. It was a year when he was on the attack on the descent as well. Now, Jorgensen follows this again. And riders who are at the back in trouble here include the two-time former winner, Yves Lompart. Well, the farmer's son from Belgium. Unless he can get back in contact, we'll be watching on from the fields. That's sad for those watching on with a local persuasion. Bram Vilton dropped behind as well. And by the way, Yves Lompard, if he had been up there, could make, could have made history. It's unlikely to see him getting back in, isn't it? it could have made history. No man has ever won this race on three occasions. His teammate Alain Philippe, however, is at the front. And well, local boy of sorts. He is, of course, a Frenchman, but he has a house in Bronzer just down the road. And this now moving to the front is Mark Hirschi. He's doing more than that, he's moving off the front now, the Swiss champion. 
racing for UAE Emirates, team we've not really seen so far. Little Trek chase this. Jonathan Milan doing the chasing. But it's stop start now. It's cagey stuff. Probing rather than full gas attacks. That's going to change because Ben Turner makes his move. In fact, this is Tarling, pardon me. And Kung is keen to go again. Now, this could be a move. Fred Wright, the British champion, decides that he wants to be involved as well. And Kirsch, national champion of Luxembourg, also covers this. Kung is asking Kirsch if he's allowed to ride. Kirsch, for the minute, just sits on and doesn't roll through. This is all that's left at the front. Another big split. 15 more riders in danger of losing contact with the front of the race in Duarte of Landa. That is the wind continues to howl in the effects microphone. So many big name riders at the back already. Alexander Kristoff, the former European champion, being one of them. Ethan Vernon there, young British sprinter. Formerly of Quick Step, the home team here. Rémi Cavagna, former French time trial champion, he's at the back for the Spanish team, Movistar as well. It's a hard day out in the Flemish hills. Inside the final 70 kilometers in Duarte of Landre 2024. It's the 78th edition of the race that began in 1945 and used to be called Duarte d'Or Belgia. Always contested on a, a Wednesday. Used to be a week and a half before the Ronde. Now it's the final test before Vlaanderen's moisture. You're looking at the peloton. One minute, 20 seconds behind what was an 11-man breakaway, but it's down to 10. The peloton has been split into three big groups here with the wind, the cobbles and the frighteningly fast pace that's been put on. This is Tim van Dijk at the front. On his wheel, Tish Benoot. Then you have Wart van Aert wearing number one on his back. Of course, it was his teammate, Christophe Laporte, who won last year. Well, we were hinting that there was a rider on the footpath earlier on from Groupama FDG. Here he is at the back. I don't think he's found out yet. The message will be being relayed now because it has just been announced that he has been put out of the race for using the footpath. And while that's happening, this has happened. Laurence Rex has crashed. He's the man on the right hand side in the fluorescent jersey. And just getting thankfully back to his feet is Cedric Berlins. Both riders going down, and this is how it happened. A rider from Sudal, quick step involved, just staying up. Oh dear, it is all happening and not of a good sort in Dwarsdorf Lander. And this is Cedric Berlins, and well, thankfully looks all right. He's lost quite a bit of his modesty, however. A new big crash behind, and lots and lots of riders down. Oh my word. And Wat van Aert is down. Wat van Aert is down. We wondered whether it was a risk coming up to the Ronde van Vlaanderen. And Wat van Aert could be seeing his Flanders dreams going up in smoke. He avoided the big races earlier this season. He came down from altitude. He's now hit the ground. Looks as though Mars Pedersen's down as well, and that's an absolute shocker. That's an absolute shocker. Oh. You can hear from the effects microphone that there are big name riders down and Biniam Girmay is one of them. Distressed, distressed sounds. Mars Pitherson just taking his helmet off and checking himself, former world champion. Jasper Sturvens down there, he is in some distress. Wout van Aert also looks like he will not continue today. Alex Kirsch is back on his feet. There's a rider down there from Astana, Kazakhstan. I'm afraid that this if you're just tuning in, is a real shock to the system.
The Visma Lisa Blake rider at the front knows that Wout van Aert has gone down there. Head on hands. It's the big name who's in some distress, and I'm afraid there are other riders here who, who are really hurting. You can hear it. It is not a pleasant sight or sound. The riders down, but the racing goes on. Not good news for Lidl Trek. Awful news for Visma Lisa Bike, but it's Visma Lisa Bike who must race on without their leader. This now as we go on to our next climb. This is the Canary Berg. And this is Matteo Jorgensen. Just behind him is Tish Benoit. It's a kilometre long this, 8.8% average, 12.1% is the maximum gradient. Jonathan Milan was one of the few riders from Lidl Trek to avoid the crash. He's there. But behind a couple of teams' hopes for the weekend might have just disappeared like that. Jasper Sturven is going to abandon the race, and he was the rider who was in agony there, holding his collarbone. Biniam Girmay was getting some treatment. Here he is, after having so much better spring. He did a great altitude camp at home in Eritrea. Has been back living for the last few weeks in Flanders. And he's out of the race too. Oh, it puts a real dampener on things and watch such an exciting week. 65 kilometres to go, and we're back with a breakaway. And while all of that's been happening, I will not call it excitement this time, but certainly happenings. The gap's gone down to 37 seconds. And it's a sickness for the racing. Reminder of those in the breakaway here. Pedersen, Kasper Pedersen, De Polter, Norska, De Bont, Janssen, Einkorn, Abramsen and Yashinya are left. And as they're now over the Canariberg, there's racing on in just over 10 k's time. They'll get to the Knochterberg for the second and final time. Counter-attack is here now. Stefan Kung being followed by Michael Falgren. That looks like Alberto Bettiol, former winner of the Tour of Flanders with Tish Benoit. He once wrote a school essay about him winning the Tour of Flanders ten years before he made his debut and finished in the top five. And Matteo Jorgensen, who now could be one of the main leaders protected for Visma Lisa bike if Wat van Aert fails to recover from his injuries for the weekend. can always be a nightmare spring if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Look at the gap that this group has now. Are there enough teams left to chase? Are there enough riders left to chase? That crash has really blown things to smithereens. Alaphilippe is in this. It looked as though there was a rider from Ineos. This is the next group on. Then there's another group. It's the riding wounded here. Those who've got away with it are riding on with an opportunity to try and take something from the day. And this is the sight that no Fleming wanted to see. And the sound you could hear was Wart van Aert in agony. Yes, the injuries look superficial, but it was the collarbone area that didn't look good. Oh, Wout van Aert. Rearranged his season this year. It was supposed to be classics, Giro debut, no tour, and then an attack of the Olympics. But an injury at this time of year really changes that approach. Let's not forget that Giro is approaching in a month's time. And before that, of course, he wanted to win a monument. He wanted to win Flanders or Roubaix. I'm afraid where he was sat there, that is not looking good. Here's the chasing group then. You can see a couple of riders drop from the breakaway. Benoit with Jorgensen, Kung, Betjol, Valgren, 
Grondin Vercouilly, the latter two having been part of the original seven-man break. And well, it's advantage here to EF Education Easy Post and this Melissa bike, and behind Jasper Sturva is sat down there with Gregory Rass, the former rider. That's not looking good for Biniam Gidemai, who's also got his shoulder. Oh, my word, there are some serious injuries there. And where it happened in the peloton has taken so many big-name riders out. But we go on, and the racing continues. It's harsh, but that's life in the Flemish Classics. Forty seconds, then. The riders coming down. Back now towards uh, Rosenaka or Rosenny. Just down the road from Bronze. Of course, we've seen the World Championships in Bronze for a long, long time, and we will see Bronze on Sunday in the big one itself. And if we're coming down to Rosenny, that means we're off to the Knochterberg, the Côte de Trieux. Seeing official abandonments then of Fanart, Girmay, and Stover. Mas Pedersen did check himself and had his helmet back on, looked to be in a little better shape. Whether he's restarted the race, I'm not sure. He certainly wasn't there. Of course, with all the racing going on ahead and what's to come at the weekend, you can imagine that a ride back to the bus might be what is in store for riders who luckily got away with that too much of an injury there. Location group two, then. Is it where the race could be here? We're hearing at least 46, 47 seconds to the next group on the road. There were some good riders in there, but of course here, you could be looking at riders as many a potential winner of this race. The likes of Bernot, who has won in Kurna before. Jorgensen, man with number four on his back here. Very talented young American. Winner of Paris-Nice. Stefan Kung is always threatened to do things in these races. There's Betio. He, of course, has won the big one, the Ronde van Vlaanderen in the past. And Michael Falgenen, let's not forget, a former winner of the Omlop Pit Newsblad, himself having recovered from a horror crash, one that took a good 18 months or so for him to get back from. Had a year out in the second division team. As we go through the outskirts of Ronsep. Roads parallel to the famous Alde Kreuzberg. Riders will be climbing on Sunday. And here is the World Championship City, Ronse. These are the riders leading the race. They're asking for the time. They don't have too much of it. 33 seconds is the answer. Ronsa having hosted the world three times, by the way. 1983, 1991 and 2007 for the Nationals. And the World Championships twice, sorry, that was 63 and 88. you can remember back to the Nonibeert winning in 1963. He beat his teammate, didn't he? Rick van Looy then, who was second. He was the favourite. And then in 1988, the late Claude Criquillon, the Belgian, had a great chance, didn't he? But crashed into those crowd control barriers. Trying to get past Steve Bauer, the Canadian. And that was when Maurizio Fondri, as the Italian, became the world champion. 
And if you're touring Flanders on a bike, this is a place to pass through a lot of the main climbs you can find down here. Here are some of the main riders left in the race from Poppel. There's Fred Wright. 87 from Ineos is Ben Turner. 61 is Michael Matthews. Still there for Lidl Trek is Jonathan Milan. And the French champion. Not seen the tricolore yet, have we? But there he is, Valentin Madouas. And just at the back of that group, riding on semi-home roads, he's based in Andorra nowadays, the Frenchman, but has a house in Bronze, Julien Alaphilippe. As we look up ahead, and for the Ineos Grenadiers, Josh Tarling is trying to do what perhaps only in this group Josh Tarling can do. And that's time trial his way across from one group to the next. Doing his best to do it all along, but of course gets into the slipstream of the motorbike to take as much of an advantage as he can. And he's doing a great job of it. He is doing a sterling job here. And this would change the game tactically for Ineos. We know he's not the strongest rider on the climbs, but you've seen what he could do here on the flat. Josh Tarling is a potential Paris-Roubaix winner, at least in the making. Very easy to say that, isn't it, when you just look at someone's ability and look, injuries. And as we're looking at Wout van Aert, we always thought that he would be a cobbled monuments man, but it looks as though injuries might get in the way this year. This was the moment that Tarling was allowed to go away. So he had a gap and went for it. And here he comes. On his way to the Knochtoberg for the second and final time. By the way, uh, Michele Gazzoli was the rider who abandoned for Astana Kazakhstan there, one of the other riders who was looking a little better than those who were screaming at in pain, but nevertheless requiring medical assistance. He was the rider sitting on the stretcher waiting for some assistance. He's abandoned the race as well, the Italian. Hearing that the second part of the peloton is a one minute and 40 from the lead now. And this is the part of the race where there is a straight road and they can see each other up the road. Tarling is burying himself to make that final effort before they get to the start of the Knochtoberg. 20 years of age from Aberaron in Wales. Just the third youngest rider in the race. Start the season down under. Has a win this year. Didn't count for the general classification, but it was the prologue in Galicia. The wind was so strong and the rain was coming from the side off the Atlantic Ocean that they neutralised it for the general, but he won the prologue in Coruña of the O Gran Camino race. Got through Paris-Nice, and well, this is his first cobbled classic of the season. Not scheduled to ride again until Paris-Roubaix. But he's on. He's in the group now, travelling at 32 seconds. Josh Tarling has got Ineos Grenadiers into the game. Now the break still has 30 seconds. But we're looking at the head of the race with Matthias Norgar there. Just going to see if there's an opportunity for anybody to survive from this breakaway. We all saw what happened last year, didn't we? Triste Bond in particular had been thinking of something like that. Or well, you had Las Cano getting up the road. Chase is at 110 now, they've really got to move on. And they need to do. The race could be going away from them other way. This is Surenkraut. Behind.
mind to see if there's a Jasper Phillips shaped jersey. There's another Alba Sindikernik jersey further back. Ara Philippe at the back of this group for Sudal Quickstep. The turn on to the first few slopes of the Knochtebeck. Called the trio for the second and final time today. It used to be climbed for a period as many as three times in this race. Nils Pollitz in this group. There's some mighty talent still here. They've got to make sure they get back in the race. Being led by Søren Kral, John Dingkorp here as well. Victor Campanares, Michael Matthews. It's eight riders at the front of the race with 54 kilometers to go. Pedersen, Kasper Pedersen, that is, Dries de Porter, Matthias Nuskar, Dries de Bont, Amon Grundal Janssen, Pascal Enkorn, Jonas Abramsen, and Toma Gashinya. At 27 seconds, you had Benoit, Jorgensen, Kung, Betio, Valgren, Tarling, Gronda, and Verkoyi. And then this group at 115, as you can see, Dean Kolb just making his way in now. He's contributing as well. Let's not forget that Valentin Madouas is a former podium finisher in the Ronde of Vlaanderen. And that is, we're climbing the Knochtenberg again. Oh, 1.2 k's from the bottom to the top of the Knochtenberg. And this is not good for Gronda, who's in the second group. Decathlon making their move. And one by one, those who are in the breakaway are losing contact now. We've already seen Grondin going backwards. This is Vercoli. Radu comes from Courtrec, just down the road. Pollitt now flicks his arm. Chris Nalon's involved. Madouas moves up. Turner's in here as well for Ineos. They're in a slightly better position. And, well, Jonathan Milan really has to hold on and do his best because half of his team is out of a ban in the race, seemingly. South American fans are in good voice today. And that particular fan might be disappointed. But uh, Jonathan Narvaez has to miss today's race with a lot of concussion, I'm afraid. Crowd still at the top of the knock to back. Second time up. And that's that. They don't have to come here again today. Next climb will be the Holton. Being chased. Less than 30 seconds, it seems, to this group now. 101 to the third group on the road. Stefan Kung, who's been in the top ten here before. He was in the top ten the same year that Tish Benot here finished second. So when they perform well in this race, they perform well together. Two years ago. It was the second of Mathieu for the Pool's two wins. And having seen the crash before and where it happened, he'll be thanking his lucky stars, I think, that he sat on the sofa watching on today. There's Madouas, who's taken a bit of an advance. This is Nelons, the former Latvian champion. Dean Kolb hanging in there at the back of Milan. Oh, well, it looked so good for Lidl Trek for quite a while, and today's turned into a nightmare. He'd already done a lot of work, and we know the hills aren't his forte. But he's battling the Italian. Let's go back to the front of the race. 23 seconds for this group of riders. Tom Scringe battling to try and get back in. Trying his best to keep it going for Lidl Trek. This is Mikael Biel. Haller on the wheel. Van Deeker, there's Lascano. Nassen. All good to see these riders weren't down and involved in the crash. 
Merce is in this group. There's Kristof. Rajovic, Serbian champion. Mezgets is there. Manji. This is Luis Aski in this group as well. And being followed up by the man they call Le Bison, the Buffalo. Adrien Petit. Tim Declerc gets the biggest cheer of the day, though, the local boy, for having done his work earlier on. Conversations at the front between two Dutch speakers, the former Belgian champion, the former Dutch champion. De Bontier and Einkorn, two strong riders. A race situation might have them believing that they're clever and smart, they can go far. Going up to the Hauteur on um, the different way this time. And these are the first of the chasers after we saw the Benoit group, led by Madouas. Podium in the uh, Ronde de Lander a couple of years ago was a tremendous result for the man from Brittany in northwest France. He's come from a really good cycling family. His father was professional. In the off-season, he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, a bit higher than the old taunt. Highest point in East Flanders. You can see the VIP tents being erected for the weekend. Twenty seconds from the leaders, just going past the windmill now to the next group. Oh, and look at this. All over the place. Madouas Court, this is the group that's a minute now. And Jasper Phillips is here. Winner of Milano San Remo, just in front of Sir and Kral. This is the pearly whites on show for Niels Pollitt. Here she. Just looking around at the back still is Ala Philippe. And Michael Matthews showing some good form. Nice to see the Australian who was second in San Remo. Back with the bolt. We're into the final 50 kilometers of Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen 2024. It has been a dramatic day and not of the good kind, I'm afraid. Yes, we've had good, aggressive attacking racing, but we've had a crash that has taken out Wout van Aert, Jasper Sturve and Binyam Girmay, plus many others. Mars Pedersen went down with them. But the first three I mentioned all went off to hospital, are being checked out, and it did not look particularly good in terms of being able to continue to race on Sunday at the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Racing has continued. 11 riders up the road, a few remain there. They have 22 seconds on those chasing, and the chasers, well, it's a golden group, isn't it? Benoit, Jorgens, Kung, Betiol, Valgren, Tarling, who made his way across as well. Gondin and Vercouilly had been with them, and you're now looking at the peloton. What's left of it at one minute and six seconds? Jonathan Milan on the radio for Lidl Track. They had been in such a strong position before. Quite a few of their leaders were taken out by the crash. Into the final 50 k's is when we then head to the Hauteur again. We've just been over that. Next up will be the Maria Borostrat. We'll then go to Ladeurs. We'll have 
the cobbles of the door and the hearse of Pontweg, and two ascents of the Nukerebeck. Town just down the road from here has its own race. This year won by Tim Medlier yet again. The Mulkerberg plus the Hedelegemstraat will be the final two obstacles. Tishpenot. Hasn't won many races in his career, but once his one have been big. And Michael Falgren, who's all skin suited up and ready to go, as aero as possible. Got the full time trial gloves on today. Chat between riders at the front. Talk of working together. And they're still working very, very well in the breakaway today. Seven remain up front, the strongest of the day. This is Abramson, he's getting quite the reputation for being out in the breakaway. We saw this last year at the Tour de France. Triste Box always had that reputation. He changed teams all the winter and he's already had two different kits on. Decathlon changing their kit the other week. Change of corporate identity with the Decathlon name and badge required that change. Antoine Marché, no change there, but well, they've had bad news on Pignan Gidmai today, he was looking so good. Let's hope that those injuries weren't as serious as first look. Concentration has to still be on here, despite, I'm sure, the often will to maybe think about something else. It's not one of the cobbled sectors, it's not one of the main hills. In this section of row, we've seen it in the races in the past. You have to keep the pressure on the pedals. As we saw with the crash earlier on, that was on one of these open sectors of road as well anywhere and often when you least expect it. Dick and Cobb just trying to get everyone organised here, look around. He's one of the most experienced men in the pedal. Former winner of Paris-Roubaix and stages at the Tour de France. When he won Roubaix, it was the first German winner for now in a century. First edition, this is Philipson now. Caps going out there. One twenty two. The reason it was growing was because of that lack of cooperation. Ian Corn just messing with his radio there. He's getting all the messages he needs to get. <laughs> Building up to a grand finale, 43 k's to go. Racing again as the kilometres really tick by. And the group ticking away from those behind. This is the favourites group at the minute that we saw. Now we're going back towards the leaders and we're on to our next cobbled sector now. Yet again, the much maligned, difficult Maria Borostrat. 2.4 kilometres of cobbles, up and down, left and right. Second and final time. 
a really difficult 10 kilometers of racing coming up because after this, we go straight to La Deux, which is a climb, then to the Dawn Cobbles afterwards, and that will take us into the final 30 kilometers of the race. Chase is starting to get organized now. Back with the Bont. Drake's doing well to hold off this group at 33 seconds. Had come down to 20. You start to get the idea and you start to wonder as well. If indeed they're as organised as they were, or if some have orders to wait here. There's a better rider place to win in the main group. Lots to consider tactically in the, ta in the classics. Well, we've seen a move here. Jonas Abramsen trying to make it harder. He's being followed now straight away by Dries de Mont. The back here, you can see that it's the number 55, Kasper Pedersen, Danish rider. Not too much time to take a drink. This could be interesting. You imagine that the strength of the breakaway for now, with 40k still to go, is to stay together and work together, share the work. But Abramsen not happy. He thinks they need a bigger gap. A couple of drinks there for the chasers. Maria Borostrat as the third group move onto it now. This is the longest, biggest gap they've had for a while. And it's now Dries von Gestel who's come to the front as well. We've seen him perform well in Flemish classics in the recent past, particularly in Gent Wevelkem. And Philippe moves up in the row of riders here too. Just right inside as you look at it, blue and white jersey on. And at the end of the Maria Borstraat for this group. They head back into Aldenardo, very close to it. And to the Ladeurs. That came back together over the top there, which is, you have to say, has to be better news for the break. Norscott, who slipped from Group 1 to Group 2 here. Brother-sister combination, his sister Emma will be racing as well for Movistar. Emma's husband, Michael Bier, also racing today for UAE. It's a family affair in the classics. All well, the Danish riders in question. Forty kilometers to go in Duarte of Lana. It's often the weather to make this an elimination race today. The riders themselves. There's been plenty of wind about. It's forecast for Sunday too. Still 40 k's out from the finish line, but. Few spectators starting to arrive. Meanwhile, out on the course, you can just see. We saw that attack a moment ago, didn't we, from Abramson? He was chased down by the bomb. Have they got back organised again? You're back with a third group here. Here's the peloton. And this now is Nailons sprinting out. There's a chat here, is everybody pulling their weight? Is everyone doing their work? They can't hang around too much. About to go uphill again, up the ladders. 1.1 kilometers long, 5.8% the average, 14.9% maximum, comes before halfway. Just gets nasty towards the top, doesn't really stop. Looks as though they're rolling through again at least now. 31 seconds is the advantage that the now six leaders can serve. And breakaway that was 11 men strong. The chasers look strong though, don't they? And some big name riders in here. 
This is that strongest, hardest bit. Riders up the saddle. Tishpanut. Man who moves to the front. The right hand side Tarling trying to steal a bit of a march. It's Norskar here who's just starting to struggle. And Norskar's danger of being dropped now. He's fighting though. He's Movistar's last man towards the front of the race today. Yes, they have Las Camas still in the next group. But at the minute, the racing is being done out front. And De Bond's just looking behind there. Ah, that's Norskar. This now is Tarling and overtaking. Trying to get back on after was the issue there for Janssen. Tarling, as we've seen, not the strongest, but this Melissa bike looking strong. They've pulled riders away, and it looks as though over the top here we might have contact soon between what was left of the breakaway and the initial attackers who formed that group just after the big crash. Six riders left from the breakaway, about to be caught. 12 seconds, turns to 10. And it's now in single digits. So Jorgensen, Benot, Kung, Valgren, and Betiol. And six plus six is 12 strong riders at the front. Eduardo Vlander right at the top of the ladders. And Michael Matthews on the attack from the peloton. Gap at 139. He must move, he must go. He is doing. Jaco Alula on the hunt. This is Milan who's trying to pull this back. Opposite to Koenig, who have both of their options to try and win the race in this group in Seren Kraut and Jasper Philipsa. It's good to see Matthews testing himself. Always thought that he could be a rider for these races. He's never really excelled too much in the Spring Classics, certainly in the cobbles, but he has the form at least on show today. It's a big, big job to do though, isn't it? 136 with this group now and the stars in it. Updated on your screen. Benot, Jorgensen, Kung, Pearson, Tupolter, Betiol and Valgren. And there are some big race winners there. And there with De Bont, Einkorn, Abramsen, Gashinya. We've got grand tour stages, monuments, other cobbled classics and national championships shared out between the riders here. It's a grand group. 37 k's to go. And from the top of La Deux, it's a fast run down towards the Dorn Cobbles. It's a section that will take them back from Aldenard towards Clairsem. Take a good look now. This is the preview. That's where we'll be on Sunday. The Ronde of Vlaanderen. And the Tour of Flanders Museum down there in Aldenarde, if you fancy a visit as well. Come and ride your bike there. Lots of routes start there and finish there as well. As Michael Matthews started his moon move just on that last hill. And you can just see that now Alpacinda Koenig wants to try and join him. Through the narrow streets on the outskirts of Aldenarda. The river Skelder flowing through the centre of the town. And the left turn here takes us very close to where the Tour of Flanders Museum I was just talking about is. It's so over the bridge they'll go. The river Skelder underneath. But they were right away from town instead of gravitating towards it today. And of course, Aldenarda, we will see you again on Sunday. There is the Skelder. And talking of all things Skelder, a week today we'll be racing Skelder Press. A river that flows 
all the way up from France as well, where it's called the Escort. Out to the sea in Antwerp and Rotterdam. It's breaking up here. They know to get they need to get up the road. One minute thirty is a long, long time. Milan, Matthews. Feeling it needs a, a more committed group. That's the museum on the right hand side there. The Zentrum Ronde van Vlaanderen. And Ardenada is a very, very pretty little town. Beautiful Gothic architecture. It's in that square where the women's race will start on Sunday. Men's race will pass through, having begun in Antwerp. Nice tailwind through town today. He's got the best view of it. Eagle-eyed. I'm sure he'd have been able to spot Tishpen up there. Stefan Kung. And Dries de Bontier, who flicks his elbow. Jonas Abramsen, fighter from Norway, comes through. This is Betiol, who's got fond memories of this town. Soloed away to victory here in his only monument win of his career so far. Last Italian to win the Tour of Flanders, Giro delle Fiandre. Oh, they're a long way back in this group, aren't they? Just coming into town now. Back to the head of the race, we're already going out of town. Casper Pedersen, it's not been another good day for our quick step and there's no cars in here by the way you can see it's neutral assistance only being handed out, just tarling towards the back there, wanting something. And that blue Shimano neutral service car, with the mechanical assistance as well. And there's one of those moments where the cycling infrastructure that normally protects people on a daily basis gets in the way of racing. Thankfully, everybody getting around that part safely. There's Tarling, who... Bead on that was a little sticky. He deserves it at this point in the race, they all do. Coming into the business end of this race now. In all reality, it started quite the way back. You've got a couple of teams in here with two riders, and tactically going to be interesting. Certainly when you get to the cobbles the next time, and we've two hills still to go in Norkara, twice up the Norkara Berg. And the next of those coming in 10 kilometers. Before we get to the Norkura Berg, there's two cobbled sectors. First the Dorn and then the Herzepantweg. The Herzepantweg, I should say. Little gap opening up here. And it could be anything as innocuous, as simple as that. Who doesn't close the wheel? And a group goes away. Race director getting out the way. And this is why, because road narrows again, and we're about to head on to our next sector of cobbles in a few moments' time when we get to the Dorden. Sun just gone in where the riders are. I take the finish line, the sun is out, still very windy. People making their way up from the centre of town after work. the station as well they've come from all over Belgian fans are here the flags will be out soon who are they gonna welcome home as the winner if it's gonna be anybody from this group they need to get organized the camp is 133 and it's fast fading away from them it's looking good for Tishman and Matteo Jorgensen who won't be feeling great given the news their teammate Wout van Aert and leader crashed out. 
They have their own opportunities to try and do something here. But not former podium finisher, Jorgensen. Shown that he can ride small stage races in the classics and well, might be even something of a grand tour tilt in the future, given his progression as well. Jorgensen from uh, Boise in Idaho. This is Søren Kraut from Denmark. Victor Kampenaerts, the Fleming. Tom Squeenge, Latvian rider who spent a lot of his time living in the United States as well. Issue there. But the gap's growing. They're just not working together. This group is, despite the tactical considerations I was running through there. Still the wind blowing right across the road. Right to left as we look at it. And the change and the turn means that it'll be a tailwind on this sector. 30 kilometers to go in the 78th edition of Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen. Translated as straight through Flanders. Rick von Steenberg was the first ever winner. 1945 it was first written. There have been many great names. Who stood on the finishing podium just outside the Hippodrome and the football stadium, the Rainbow Stadium after the World Championships and cycling that were held here in Warakim. Another turn coming up and just look at those flags. The wind is absolutely howling today. to the flags. Look at all of that open road. Riders who've been dropped a long time ago. That's Grundal Janssen alongside him, Norse Scott. Then you've got the chasers. And it's getting to the stage where they're almost too far back now. Certainly with a lack of coherence. And nobody really to work for them. On our next sector, it's the Dorn. Wind blowing right to left as we look at it. That's why the riders are just fanning across. 900 metres long, this cobbled sector. We've even got riders taking the wrist of punctures there by trying to have a, a smoother run and make it into a, a gravel run instead. But you can see that the odd sign's been placed to try and stop riders riding on that sector. And a lot of the bigger races like this at the weekend as Kasper Pearson starts to lose contact, you'll see them barriered off. Pearson here struggling, and it looks as though he's the last man from Sudar Quickstep to be involved at the front for now. Because the gap behind to Ala Philippe's now at 140 almost. He's burying himself just to try and stay in contact here and hopefully feel better towards the end. It's a rarity that that happens, but you have to give your all. Pedersen, who's started his career riding on the track. On the road here, and after that big effort, does get back in. But for how long? Here's Jorgensen. Well, there's riders who'll have to win in different ways here. Not everybody can rely on their sprint. Betty on one of the few riders who could probably think about doing that, but he's also one of the riders who likes to get out there and race, as we saw in Milano Torino in Milan Turin, the world's oldest classic, a couple of Wednesdays ago. Oh, Kasper Pedersen's feeling it, isn't he? Every time the road goes uphill. Sprint out the saddle just to keep pace with them. Up the town of Leda. It looks as though it's Fisma Lisa Biker up there following this move. You can imagine that Stefan Kuhn will be one of the riders. He's at the front who doesn't want to take everybody to the finish, and that's why he's making it difficult here. So dropped his Ian Corn. Tarling's having to work to get back on. Also out the back there, you can see the rider from 
Total Energy. That's Thomas Gachinia. And Dries de Poulter. It's the riders who've been in the breakaway all day long who are suffering the most here now. Gachinia is looking all right, though. Making that big effort to try and get across. 23-year-old Frenchman from Niort. No victories in his career so far, but he's had a, a big calendar of on-day races today. This is Kung really giving his all. Onto the Herz of Pontwick. You'll know the sector well. You can just see that sheltering from the wind as much as possible. De Bont is doing well to hang on from the break. But note is a rider who's having to try and close here. And he's in danger of missing out. Big move going here. Valgren's caught out. Abramson's come across. Tarling is making his move. But Note's trying to stay in touch. And after having launched the move, Kung sitting now on the wheel of Jorgensen. Abramson has made a great effort to get in here. Still two riders from the original breakaway remaining. And Michael Valgren is fighting to try and stay with Josh Tarling. Famous windmill up ahead at the end of the Herzer Pontweg. They're not well. Battling and battling and battling. And in the end, it looks as though he might just have enough to get back in. Same with Josh Tarling. And talking of famous windmills, here we go. The Skitjan Peter Mole. It was actually constructed in a different area of Belgium before being brought here and reconstructed. Benoit is back on, and that's better for Visma Lisa bike. Tactical options. Tarling looks like he's going to make it back too. Just in time for the final 25 kilometers. And the next question mark would be over. Michael Valgren, former winner of the Omlop at Newsplat. But as soon as they get back, the game starts again. And Kung tries to pull it on once more. He's not one of the fastest of the sprinters here. 250 metres long, the Wanakam door. You see him in the gutter there, trying to avoid the cobbles. No big difference made by the Swiss superstar. And who had that horrible, horrible crash in the European Time Trial Championships in September. Now, De Bont, tired legs from the morning breakaway. If he can hang on, could get him into the top ten in Dwarves of Vlaanderen. This is Alan Grandal Janssen about to be caught by what's left of the peloton, but as we suggested earlier on, 151 now. It would take something extremely special, maybe even combined with a bit of a disaster in the front for any of these guys to get back in time. Yes, there's still 25 k's to go, but it's difficult to see where the right move's coming from. Visma Lisa Bike once again the strongest team. They've got two riders here. Slightly weakened EF Education Easy Post. Yes, Betiol is there, and we know he's strong. And it's good to see him back actually after a crash on Friday in Arl Baker. Didn't race on Sunday. He's minus a man. It's Benoit, Abramson, Kung, Betiol. Tarling, Jorgensen, alongside Dick Atlan. And this is the graphic illustrating what I was telling you about. Tactical superiority for those in yellow. The killer bees with an opportunity to stink. A team that won all three Grand Tours last year. They won all of the cobbled classics until we got to the monuments. Milan's on the move. He's 
such a strong rider, isn't he? We saw this in Kith Wevelkem on Sunday. It was during the Plug Street sectors that he was at in the front. A lot of destiny are trying to chase. Belgian team. Next man to be caught will be Matthias Nusko of Movistar. Danish rider from the Spanish team. On the wheel of the Italian rider who represents the US based team. Lidl Trek. Now, what's happening here? Maybe all getting a little tactical. Last bits of food and drink, of course, getting up to 20 k's to go. It's not as if the team cars are behind and they can go back and feed properly, however. But they do have that 1 minute 45 now. There's no immediate danger of people from behind. And we're now approaching Norkada. And we're about to head up the Norkada Berg. And Norkada is a beautiful little village in the Flemish Arden. Characterised by its main street, a cobbled street going up the hill through the centre. The finish of the Norkada Cursa, one of the Belgian semi-classics midweek that has already been ridden this year, is right at the top of it. And here we go. Turns through town and goes uphill. There is no good up. And these are the leaders. And this is the section where Tim Medley was sprinting up to victory. It's the section where Alberto Betiol takes off. And look at this. He's opening up a gap. We know he likes to go alone. For now, it's Matteo Jorgensen who's trying to respond. Stefan Kung is looking pretty strong as well. It's a tailwind up here with the Asturian flag flying. Fans coming from all over Europe. Well, no Spanish representation in this group, but the supporters were on the side of the road there. Over the top of the Norkereberg, Alberto Petiol lighting things up. Over the top, not with a big gap though. Reminder that we have to go up through Norcara once more. But we're into the end game. And it's the Italian former winner of the Ronde van Vlaanderen who's already looking for win number two of the season. Tarling. He's put in a great demonstration of tenacity today, hasn't he? Off and off the back on these sections, but he fights his way back on. He's got Tish Benut in front of him. Benut's teammate Jorgensen is the man doing the chasing here of Betiol. Betiol will try again. Strong today, the Italian. De Bont is in trouble for Decathlon. Here's the moment he went. Look at the acceleration on the cobbles there. That's another move now as Benot and Tarling are behind. That's just putting De Bont in trouble. This is good for Kung. Less opportunities for somebody to get in his way in the sprint. A better opportunity for him. And Stefan Kung in road racing. Well, it's been a while since he had success outside of the time trials. To go all the way back to when he was national champion in 2020. Last time we won a road race, everything else has been time trials. It's the last time he won a World Tour race on the road. It was five years ago now, stage two of the Tour de Romandie. As we get into 20 kilometres to go now, and Tarling still fighting. Back towards Kroesem now, then. Next up is the cobbles of the Herlegemstraat. Who's going to be the next to go? King in the blue, Betiol in the pink, Abramson is the man in the red. Maybe a bit of a dark horse here. He's shown strong, hasn't he, despite being in the break. There's a shake of the head there from Jorgensen. 
he'd be happy to have the note back. He's just sitting on the wheel of Tarling, and that's where the tactics get interesting. Wind blowing right across the road. Good news is, across the head Legum Strat, which they're about to enter in a minute, they've got a tailwind. It will be lightning through here, and a reminder that this is the first of two passages now through the head Legum Strat. It's 800 metres, it will be the final obstacle of the race with six kilometres to go. Oh, no, 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 no. Issues, 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 and from being so, so strong with two riders in the front group, they now have none. Alberto Bettiol with a mechanical on the head leg and strat. Or is it? It looks like it might be mechanical in the legs. It's cramp. As well as an issue with the back tyre, maybe. N I'm being told it wasn't flat. Maybe I'm trying to help him out a bit there. Betiol with that left leg out. No puncture, just a puncture in the legs. Out of gas. And that changes things again. More strength to Visma Lisa Biker. Have these two riders now, and Tish Benot is going to ride because Matteo Jorgensen has a great opportunity. Josh Tarling did well to work his way back. Dries de Bont, as time goes by and rivals move away, gets the other opportunity. Reminder that he was there from the morning breakaway, and same for Jonas Abramson. And I've just had to remind myself, Jonas Abramson is 28 now. He has never won a professional bike race. What a story that would be today. Hanging on from the breakaway, and this is similar to Oyer Lascano last year. Now then, what happened? There is Betty all sitting up. On the radio. Ah, the back tyre looks full to me as well. We'll have to wait until we get the final confirmation. Of course, through the arch that says 5Ks to go, but we've got one more lap of the circuit to go before we get to that point. Tell you what, Eduardo Vlandre is never without incident. Interesting. Jorgensen attacking, and look at how Benot just let that go there. Followed him, let the wheel go, and this now is Alberto Petiol, and well, he is out the game completely. Jorgensen being chased, Kung being made to chase him, and Matteo Jorgensen striking out for victory with 70 kilometers to go. This is where they can play the tactical cards. Jorgensen the first to really attack. If this is brought back, then you might expect Benot to have a go. Stefan Kung doing the chasing. Tarling crucially still there. De Bont is there, Abramson. As I said before, don't count these guys out. Certainly if you're gonna have a situation where it's Kung looking at Jorgensen and Benot and vice versa. Six riders with a chance to win Duas of Landre. Tish Benut, Matteo Jorgensen, Stefan Kung, Josh Tarling. And of course, from the morning breakaway, Dries de Bont and Jonas Abramsen. Abramsen was in a breakaway in the Tour de France last year and managed to take a podium on a day. But he can sniff something big here reaches into his pocket, grabs some sustenance, that last bit of energy. Not sure there'll be time to do it, though, because Benoit makes a move. The Bont is with him, and it's the Bont now. Is there anything left? On the outskirts of Wadakin. Again, they will be wishing that they were going under the 3K to go arch. There's still more to do. Now, chasing group, trying to get organised again, but this is getting hard. 
We can do it, shouts Jonathan Milan. He's certainly positive. There's the famous Hippodrome in Warragham. Home to the Warragham Cursa. The Gaverbeek Hippodrome. The race will go past. The first few riders who've decided not to finish today's race have just gone past the finishing line here, making their way back to the bus. These riders are going all the way. Six of them in contention to the win. That's the famous race course they go. That's like a day out at the races. Look, all the VIP boxes are full. The women's race starting there earlier on today. A new hotel that's been built on the side in Hippolodja. Fine afternoon, it looks out to be. Fourteen kilometers ago in the men's Duardo Vlandre. Been an attritional affair, not always in the way we wanted it to be, let's be honest. A really nasty crash has taken some superstars up the game today, including Wout van Aert, Mars Pedersen, Jasper Sturve and Binyam Germay. Many others caught up affected in it. These are the survivors. The last check, over a minute and a half to chasers Milan, Pedersen and Norskot. Betiol and Valgren both dropped, and it had looked such a strong position for EF Education Easy Post. They'll have to go again on Sunday. There's Stefan Kug. He's threatened for so long to win one of these cobbled classics, hasn't he? And he's come close. He's been on podiums. In the end, the only race he's ever won in Belgium was a time trial back in 2017. Is today to be his day? Josh Tarling, this is his prep for Paris-Roubaix in a week and a half's time. But he's ridden well today, the young man. Just two riders younger than him in the race, 20 years of age, European time trial champion. He's kept himself in touch for the Ineos Grenadiers who with the big budget they have, have been winning nowhere near as much as you might expect. For now, they're all riding together. With 13 k's to go, we're on our way to our next obstacle in the final hill of the day. The Lats to Hellink. No could have better. pulling their weight here. 2.7 kilometers to go to that last climb. And as we've just seen, it's a really fast run in. That little bit of a tailwind across the final cobbled sector of the head leg of Strat. And then the twisting and turning back into Warakem itself. Taking a while for the atmosphere to build at the finish today, but the crowd's here and waiting. Start to look out for anybody missing their turn here. Even a motorway bridge can be a launch pad at this point. For now, everybody rolls through. Drista Bomp was just starting to sit on a little. Could say he's the man with the excuse. Alongside Jonas Abramson.
Very clever riding a game from Tishpanot there, just letting the wheel go. His teammate grabbing that little bit of an advance. This time it didn't go. But we're coming to the outskirts of Nokura, and we're ready to climb up the hill again. This is the uh, Hellink Delsigen Castle. Someone's home anyway. At least one car on that big drive. Back to the racing. Just look who's continuing to sit at the back there. Dries de Pont, ready and waiting. Yeah. No, nope, there, and Kung is not letting him go anywhere. De Pont, by the way, has been Belgian champion. Came over from Alpacine to Koenig. Two-year deal to join Decathlon. He's a stage winner at the Giro d'Italia. Now here are the chasers. Looks as though completely out the game is Betiol. We'll have to wait and see what happened afterwards. I'm sure we can... It'll all come out in the wash in the next day or two. But these are the closest chasers at 1 minute 20. The game is done. The win is coming from the front group. They'll increasingly look around. That message will be getting through now. Sports directors see that on the television. They get the updates on the race radio and they'll be telling their riders, here we go, this is the score, these are the tactics we want you to employ. As De Bont is coaxed through to the front. By the way, only now, through Wadachem, have the team cars been able to come up. There's going to be no real chance to go back and chat because the game is happening right here. Any talking will have to be done on the radio. You can see 1 minute 22 to those next riders. And remember the further group behind, well, that was a long way off as well. Ten kilometres remain and Tishpanot takes off. He does so before we go up the hill in Nokura. Tarling is on his wheel and this is interesting. Who else is going to chase? Obviously, Jorgensen won't chase. He'll mark the other riders who come along. Dries de Pont still looking good. And the hill up Norkada, this time on the main road. De Pont making it there. Abramson is gambling here. He's sitting on the wheel of Jorgensen, who in turn is making Kung close the gap. If it does come back together, keep your eye on Matteo Jorgensen. Tishpanot still maintaining this gap. And Dries de Bont here will be in dreamland from the morning breakaway with an opportunity to be on the podium. Just shows we saw it last year with Los Cano. If you're at the front of this race, anything can happen. But not going, though. But not going, and they can't keep him in check. Tarling gives way. The young Welshman seeds, and it's two Flemings at the front. And look at how much he's gritting those teeth to be with him. Dries de Bont makes it on. And now Kung goes right over the top here. The main road this time up to Nokere, used to full effect by the riders, particularly Tish Benoit. And that's Tarling now at the back who really has to make sure he survives just to the top here. His race isn't over if this comes back together. So they came up from the right hand side last time. And now they go over the top. Last hill done and dusted and Josh Tarling still in the mix. He'll have been told there just to keep an eye on those numbers, make sure he didn't go into the red. But not now he's caught and this is Kung launching his attack down the hill and Matteo Jorgensen following him. Benoit still involved. Not too much to separate them. 8.5 kilometres remain in this year's Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen. As it stands, we're going to have a new name on the honours list. Two-time winner Lompat lost contact a long time ago. 
and it's Kung, who's been second here in plenty of cobbled classics. But note who's been second in this very race, who's trying to upgrade. And Tarling still, still digging deep. You have to admire his tenacity. Follows on. Remember, no Belgian winner here since Yves Lombard in 2018. So that's Jorgensen's latest move. Now goes Benoit. He knew what he was doing. And again, it's De Bond who's going to follow. This time, Jorgensen's going to let them go. And Kung, having just used everything he could, now waits, it's Abramson who follows. Kung desperately trying to get across. These games are fascinating to watch. Long live the Cobble Classics. It is so different, isn't it? But it never stops being entertaining. Now Tarling just has to settle it in, and this is his terrain. Next move, it's Jorgensen. Is there going to be a response? This time there might not be. And Matteo Jorgensen is riding away. Matteo Jorgensen makes the move. Is it the winning move? Tarling thought about it. Kung thought about going with him. And unless there's a reaction now, there's enough hesitation to allow Matteo Jorgensen to ride away to victory at Dwarsdorf Landre. You can have all the hills, all the cobbles, all the important sectors but on an innocuous spot of road with nothing happening, a gap is established and the race is on its way to being won. And with this man, it's been coming for a while. A win in Paris, and as less there's any sort of incident here, it could well be a win in a cobbled semi-classic. There'll be worry for Wout van Aert, but on the road, no Wout, no problem, because Matteo Jorgensen looks like he might pull this home. Is there going to be one last reaction, though? Dries de Bont's giving everything. Eight seconds for Jorgensen. And Tarling, well... From this position, podium would be a great result. Same for both De Bont and Abramson, they know that. Morning breakaway. And Tarling can see this. This is his opportunity to try and get ahead. Twelve seconds now for Jorgens. Hearing 16 seconds. Last cobbled sector of the day is done for the chasing group. And there are five kilometers to ride. But is there enough energy? Is there enough will to bring back the leader? It looks done and dusted. And Matteo Jorgensen, bar incident or accident, is on his way to becoming the first ever winner from the United States of this race. The men's Dwarsdorf Landre on its way to going to the man from Boise, Idaho. And all this now plays into his hands. They're thinking of the podium, they're thinking of how they can beat each other. And all the while, it's going to turn into a victory lap of Warakim for the paris winner, who's about to be the winner of Dwarsdorf Landrup.
Well, the man who this time last year was riding for the Spanish team Movistar, but wanted to get the best out of himself. Loved the atmosphere at the team, but wanted a more professional approach. Everything controlled to the nth degree, the training camps, the nutrition. But you have to have the racing sense, and he had exactly that. Making the move, just when everybody was on the limit. And Jorgensen has this. Almost half a minute now, with Tishba not able to control attacks and mark them behind. Visma, Lisa Bayer go to take their win. Here we go. Tarling wants the podium. Tom Pidcock from Great Britain, who was third there last year. And now Stefan Kuhn. Been in the top ten here previously. Been on the podium of other cobbled races. He just can't seem to snap that elastic Kung. He's tried and tried and tried. And this time there are three Ks to go for Jorgensen. You can't quite see the celebrations yet, but this was the race being won right here. Slight hesitation from Abramson. Kung not being the one to chase it this time, and there was no one else to go. Abramson, wow, what a move this is. And that would be a good story, wouldn't it? Somebody from the break hanging on and taking a podium. We saw it last year with Lascano. And there's something about this race that if you get up the road, you get a chance. This is how it happened. Now, he's not going to win his first pro bike race today, but he's going to get just about as close as you can. It's going to be all smiles at the front for the first American winner of the men's Dwarsdorf Lander, it seems. And behind that, all over the place now, looking for the podium. Cohesion is gone. Tarling this time maybe has given too much. Two Ks to ride and on the outskirts of town now. Matteo Jorgensen starts to soak up the cheers. Oh, good crowds outlining the route this afternoon. Most of the action has taken place, as it always does, in the heart of the Flemish Ardent. Today on the roads into Warachim. Flam Rouge, one kilometre to go. But in reality, the race was won a few k's back. The wind continues to howl. He survived that. He survived the crashes and the moves. And he's going to be the last man standing. Abramson managed to get away. Benot's bringing him back. They're eyeing two on the podium here. Benot, who's been second as well. And, uh, this is where the last battle in the race lies. There'll be a final right turn here into the finish straight. And he knows he's done it. What a season it's been so far. Move from Movistar. 
went to the top team at Fisma Lisa Bike and now he sees the finish line. Matteo Jorgensen about to enjoy his moment. The first man from his country. The trendsetter of the season. He's done it in a stage race. He's now a cobbled semi-classic winner. Matteo Jorgensen, welcome to the classics big time. A sensational victory from Matteo Jorgensen. Race ridden at 45.1 kilometers per hour. And despite losing Wat van Aert on the day, they've gained a big win for their new star. Sprint for second. There's Benoit in the yellow on the right hand side. It's Abramson who's trying to hold them off. Never won a bike race, but what a result that is in the morning breakaway. Jonas Abramson takes second place. It's a third place for Stefan Kung. Fourth for Dish Benoit, but his teammate takes the win. And it is smiles all round for Matteo Jorgensen and Visma Lisa Bike. There's Josh Tarling who gave us all sixth place for him. And these guys can now celebrate. Exhausted. But exuberant. They helped each other. Of course, there'll be some news to digest when they get back onto the bus. They'll be hoping that Wat van Aert can be as well as possible, despite looking in severe distress before. But they've won the race today. And now the fight for the top ten in shoes. Here's Valgren into the finishing straight. Jonathan Milan, who's looking at a top ten. Of course, he's the big sprint name here. But what's left in the sprint legs? That's the question. He still looks like he has the power. And Jonathan Milan is going to win that battle for seventh place. Milan does it. Coming over in eighth is Falgren, ninth, and came from the breakaway, you have to say, well ridden to Norsquat. And a tenth place going for Tuma Gashinya. But it's all about the winner, and that is Matteo Jorgensen. And what's left of the peloton about to come across the line. Decathlon as you deserve with Pierre Gautra there. Here's she at the back of that group. And there are some very, very tired legs. And putting things into perspective is the American Cemetery. Still leased by the United States. And President Obama visited a few years back. This is the only American cemetery for soldiers of the First World War in the whole of Flanders. One of the smaller of its kind, but kept up by the American government, which in every day, around Remembrance Day every year, there is a special service. memory to all of the American servicemen who lost their lives in World War One. Well, a reflection of a more important kind going on down there. Of course, reflecting on the race. Wow. So much happening today. It'll all come out in the next few days. And we're about to hear from our winner. Here is Matteo Jorgensen with Renard Scott. Matteo Jorgensen, many congratulations. You win a Flemish Classic. We could see that it was really a joy. Yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable, it really is. This whole season has been a dream so far. I, 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 yeah, it's surreal, actually. Must have been very important that you were the two of you, you and Fish, in that reading group at the end. Yeah, very important. Uh, as a team, our whole uh, our whole strategy is based around having numbers in the final, so 
yeah, there was a moment there on one of the last cobble sections where uh, Stefan Kung was going in the gutter and yeah, Tiege was just a little bit gapped and yeah, thankfully I waited for him because I think without him I wouldn't have won this race. Of course, there was this terrible crash with Wout and the other big guys involved. Did you witness what happened there? Could you, did you see what happened there? Yes, I was on Wout's wheel at the time, actually. Uh, just before the Canaryberg, uh, it was obviously a decisive moment in the race. And yeah, it was just a racing incident. Uh, we had two lead out turns, Trek and us. And yeah, basically uh, we came together and Wout and I think Alex Kirsch came together and uh, it was a really ugly fall. I, uh, I saw the whole thing and I knew that Wow was going to be out of the race at that point. We were going so fast. So we, Tiege and I continued with the plan because, uh, yeah, there's still a bike race, but yeah, my thoughts are with Wild and, and the rest of the guys involved. All those things together, your excellent performance today, it may be that you're the man for the, this next Sunday for to be the leader from Visma Lisa Bike in the Tour of Flanders. I hope that's not the case. I hope uh, I hope uh, everyone's good, and uh, I will uh, assess that later. We know Wout is in the hospital right now. You haven't heard anything yet. I guess it's too too early days. Yeah, I have no news. Uh, just in the radio after the finish, they told me that Wout was in the hospital. So yeah, my thoughts are with with Wout, and yeah, I, I really hope he uh, he's okay. In the final stretch, we could see some disbelief in in your face that you win this race as well after Paris Nice. This is a dream, living the dream. Yeah, I uh, after Paris Nice refocused a bit because I still didn't have an auto qualification for the Olympics, and that's a big goal for me to make it to the Olympics. So now uh, I have that in the pocket, and yeah, it's been <laughs> an insane season. I really can't believe it. Matteo Jorgensen, many congratulations. Great race, thank you. Thank you. Well, that certainly was a great race, and we look forward to seeing him at the Olympic Games. Top 10 in Duarte of Landre after a cruel race for some, but a victorious, beautiful race for others. Jorgensen, the first American winner of this race, ahead of Abramson and Kungels on the podium. Benoit de Bont in the top five. No Belgian winner still since 2018. Tarling, Milan, Valgren, Norska and Gashinia all in the top 10. This is the moment. Absolute delight. And you heard what it meant to him. In dreamland this year. Bachy needs a stage race and a cobbled classic. To go back a long way to find winners of those types of races together. And who knows, in this form, Tour of Flanders is on Sunday. I'm sure he'll allow himself to dream. And for Visma Lisa Bike, well, yep, yeah, what a signing. The chaos after the line. <laughs> rock! Rock! <laughs> ah! And you can hear yeah, what it meant. Man. Oh. What a win. Hey. Vamos. Vamos indeed. <laughs> and Tish Bernot, who made that possible, so important in the end there. They know what they have to do playing those cards. One day it's one, one day it's another. But not this time playing the card. Jorgensen taking advantage. Oh, one of the most famous roundabouts in cycling, let's put it that way. Where we finish each and every year in Wadakam on a Wednesday afternoon. Nice crowds out today. Good afternoon for it, despite the cold weather and the wind.
Well, we will hear very, very soon from the other riders involved on the podium. And there's the Rainbow Stadium off to the right-hand side. The Regenburg Stadion. Zulte Wadegem, who are currently in the second division of Belgian soccer. The training ground just behind. And Wadegem Town just over to the right-hand side of this shot. The rest looking out towards West Flanders. North Sea in the distance. A couple of the teams are choosing this area to stay for their classics campaigns. UAE Emirates and Q36.5. Oh, this race went away with 11 riders taking an hour to form the breakaway. Behind Lidl Trek, we're looking so strong. Visma Lisa bike were up towards the front with them. But soon after this, the race would change. Problems in the wind, former winner Lampard dropped, and then this, a shocker. Lidl, Trek and Jumbo Visma together, Wart van Aert down and in audible pain there. Sturven as well, Biniam Germay, it really was a distressing sight and sound. The racing on ahead saw this group break away. They were led by Stefan Kung. Josh Tarling really using a lot of energy to get up to the group. Behind, they were never going to catch them again. The minute and a half gap at this point. Betior was in the group. He went over the Nolkerberg. Completely ran out of energy here, looking as though he was cramping up given the shot again. And abruptly, his race ended. Benoit would try a second time up Norkada. Jorgensen marking and following in this occasion. When it came back together, it'd be Jorgensen's turn to have a go. Hesitation, everybody on their limit. Benoit obviously radioing in to tell his teammate to carry on. His teammate did carry on, and he would be riding away to victory. Final five kilometers, in reality, a procession. Abramson had an opportunity, and in the end, the first American winner among the men at Dwarsdorf Landere, Matteo Jorgensen. That right turn off the main road was taken by Abramson, who launched his sprint early. And Jonas Abramson took a fantastic result away from getting in the morning breakaway. Uno X Mobility with a really, really good ride there. Third goes to Stefan Kung, who shows he's in form for the Tour of Flanders. Visma Lisa bike win Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen, and they win with Matteo Jorgensen. Well, from old great cyclist, there's Brick Scotter, a legend he was. Let's hear from another fighter now in Jonas Abramsen. Jonas Abramsen, uh, many congratulations. Runner-up in uh, Dwarstoort Vlaanderen. Out of the, the breakaway, do you did you do you surprise yourself? Yes, I've been a lot in the breakaway this year, so I'm very happy to uh, get a podium. I was close in uh, Treno Adriatico. Uh, was taken again with 50 meter today. I'm very happy with uh, with the podium. Could you have won this race because uh, everything seemed possible with the six leaders at the end? Yes, everything is possible. But uh, Jumbo was very very strong there with two guys in the uh, in the end, and I was attacking uh, a lot. So uh, I'm very happy with podium with uh, so strong uh, strong guys in the, uh, the end there. Where are your limits in, in the future? Because if you end on the podium in, in a, a semi-classic like this, then usually that creates expectations. Yes, uh, maybe it's not so easy to go in the breakaway anymore. Uh, but uh, I feel this last year since before Tour de France 
one years ago. Uh, I have uh, before that I have mono, and after I take a, a long break, and after that um, I have been much better. And it's it's nice to to see that I can get a podium in a in a world race. That's so true. Many congratulations, you. Jonas Abrams. Jonas Abramsen speaking to Renat Skota there. It's very nice indeed. I think that was an understatement. What a ride. And Stefan Kung there in third place. Sandwiched in between two really famous riders. That has to be a result that he is proud of and his team as well. A team that's made up entirely of Norwegian and Danish riders. Norwegian cycling in rude health at the minute. And while Danish cycling, we only have to mention a certain Jonas Vingegaard. And we're only getting started. So we've heard from the winner. We've heard from the second place. One man to hear from before we go to the podium itself. Stefan Kung sitting behind the podium and waiting to give us his thoughts on the afternoon's proceedings. Stefan Kung, congratulations on uh, that podium spot. Was that the maximum today? <laughs> I think the maximum would have been second place <laughs> because, uh, yeah, in the end, uh, Jumbo, uh, no, sorry, Wisma had the, had the numbers and uh, they played it well. And I mean, I was probably, yeah, the, the strongest uh, apart from them. And so, uh, yeah, it was it was impossible for me to to uh, yeah to to win this race actually because uh, in the end they were both really strong riders and they played it well so yeah when there's uh, two against one and all the others are just looking at me because they're they're on the limit and it's uh, really difficult of course there was the already infamous crash in the run up to the canary Berg. what was your take on it what did you experience in that uh, particular phase yeah, it was uh, it was a bit hectic before, and I, I was alone. I didn't have a teammate there, so uh, I I just moved up actually, and afterwards I hear the crash uh, in my yeah at the back of me, and uh, then at the first moment, like I think every everyone was like, a bit shocked, and then uh, Matteo reopened the race, and uh, uh, yeah, then we rode away, but uh, because he he uh, went very fast. The first comments, uh, there's already talk about um, not having that descent ever again. What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I read that they took it out of Tour of Flanders because there was a crash there last year already. Uh, honestly, like there is a few spots like this also when we come down uh, from Hotond uh, to the approach of Trieux, it's the same thing. And today I was a bit uh, in the back and I was also like, sometimes it just crosses your mind for a second, like, wow, if because some guys were like on the right hand side in the gutter, and it doesn't, there's a touch of wheels, so it, it can go so quick. Like, I would say normally, like nine, ta nine, time, uh, nine times out of ten, it's okay. I, I did these races for ten years now, and on the Canary Bay, it's only in the last two years uh, that I remember like such big crashes. But, well, yeah, if, uh, it's, hard, it, I, it's hard to avoid, you know. I mean, there's always going to be a big road, and uh, when we ride on small road, then, oh, it's dangerous also. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's part of cycling but uh, it's not a part that we want to see podium spot today do you consider yourself a podium contender for next Sunday's race yeah I, I think so because uh, for me normally the cobble climbs suit me even better and uh, I also feel like I'm getting better and better from race to race uh, Idria is already quite good in Ghent uh, yeah I was missing a little bit there on the first time camel but today it was the best I felt uh, from all these races so uh, it's positive towards the Tour of Flanders, and I also hope uh, that we're going to be there uh, with a strong team. Like normally, we have three cars to play with uh, Lawrence, uh, Valentin, and myself. And yeah, then we have to try and do something. Thank you, and good luck in the next races. Thank you very much. Well, a confident Stefan Kung ahead of Sunday, and again, the talk will always be as there often is after the crash involving that magnitude of distress and injury, questions about race routes and all sorts, but again, a lot of the time it's the racers that make the route the way they are as well. 
lots of talk to be had about that and whatever happens the decision will be reached so we're right for the podium of course the images we saw across the Flemish Yard then on a nice sunny afternoon albeit a cold one look at that it's worth standing out in the cold for that wasn't it national pride on show we'll see that again on Sunday and well this is Flanders in spring isn't it passion smiles and bike races and battling against the conditions that well time moves on but it's like going back in time to these races sometimes and today conquering the cobbles Matteo Jorgensen winning Dwarsdorf Landra End of all those cinematic shots, there's the winner. Comes from Idaho, but he was born not far from Hollywood. He was born in Walnut Creek in California. And here he is. And also, you know, the round three years. And the whole bunch was still down from Hong Kong. I was thinking the same. Uh, you know, there's like even like the bike park, yeah. you have the little uh, gutter. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like if one guy uh, cuts bridges all over the place, like, but the cobbles have gaps, and we have no way to go down this climb, you know? It's all uh, has to be like, yeah. Now, the conversation between the two about that incident and Stefan Kung asking us to Walt van Aert's health. Apologies if you heard any industrial language there. Understandable in the heat of the moment. Not knowing they're on camera. <laughs> Stefan Kung, third place. Happy to be back on the podium. Next to introduce, what a moment it is for 28-year-old Jonas Abrahamsen. Not a star by any means, but he's worked his way up. Last year, impressive in the Tour de France. Aggressive again today, and he has his reward. But look at the smile on the face of that man. Matteo Jorgensen just gets better and better. It just leaves you asking. He won Paris-Nice. He's won here. Whatever next? The feeling that the sky's the limit. Visma Lisa Bike take the win. Matteo Jorgensen, the first American to win the men's Duarte of Landre. He does so in front of Jonas Abramsen and Stefan Kuhn. So the flowers handed out by the sponsors. And there's the rather unique prize you can see on the left hand side that's going to be given to the winner. They can still be staying for a while because I'm not sure that fits in the hand luggage of most of the budget airlines you'll be returning to southern France on. He might have to have one that delivered express back home to Nice. It's the cuddly toy in the shape of the local racing horse. There is Matteo Jorgensen. We have also a glittering overwinning trophy. The overwinning trophy will be given out by the president of the organization, Mr. Pavel de Smet. Can the trophy be With applause for Matteo Jorgensen. Takes a sculpture home with him as well. And then comes there by the trophy also an extra trophy, a belt Oh, he's starting to win. Now he's going to have to upgrade the apartment, I think, for more storage space. Ah, Matteo Jorgensen didn't quite gallop away to the victory, did he? More of a trot in the final couple of kilometres after the damage had been done. But first across the post and winner in Wadakim, Matteo Jorgens. And he's about to get his own champagne moment. Now it's time for some bang, guys. Go ahead. The Kurke gaan trouwen. The champagne. Well, a big win in its own right, this one. But those on the podium will be dreaming of success on Sunday in Vlaanderen's Moister. The Kurke gaan eraf. 
Shields guys, Prozit, laat het smaken wel in. A champagne moment for Matteo Jorgensen as he wins the Wars of Vlaanderen. A clink of the glass with Kung and Abramsen, the three best guys on the day. But head and shoulders above the best. Matteo Jorgensen. Well, there's your post race family photo. All smiles at the end of another Dwarsdor Vlaanderen. Jorgensen the winner. All the talking and riding has been done. Now we go to Antwerp and Aldenarde on Sunday. The big one, the Ronde van Vlaanderen, is upon us. We have the selfie moment to get out the way first. Uh, it's all smiles here. There will be worry in the background and concern as to first the health of mates, then of course the options tactically for Sunday. All of that will come out in the next few hours. Wherever you're watching around the world, I'm sure you all hope we can see all the best riders on the line at the weekend. The best rider today, though, was Matteo Jorgensen, who made history as the first men's American winner of Dwarzel Vlaanderen and was celebrating in Warakim.